Hi guys, welcome to Football Man Cops. As you can see, I am on my own. Saturday night, obviously, what you've seen in the title, we're going to talk about what is Manchester City and Pep Guardiola going to do about Manchester City's defence at the moment. Obviously, it's not great. It's not it's not a very good record defensively, especially away from home at, at the moment at all. The reason that's happening is there's injuries. What Man City can't do anything about, really. Obviously, Laporte's gone out with about six months. Uh, John Stones out for about five weeks and maybe about four or three weeks left, about at least a month for John Stones until he returns. So obviously that leaves the only centre centre back really for Man City is Otamendi. So they've had to put in obviously Fernandinho at the back with him who isn't actual natural def centre back. He's like a defensive midfielder. That's what he's he's played for Man City the last few years and obviously last season the season before when they got the 100 points, he was a massive part of Man City's defensive midfield. That's probably why they were so solid last season and the season after the defensively. Obviously, they brought that Rodri in. Not, he's not done too bad. He picks up quite a lot of yellow cards, gives away silly fouls. He, obviously, he also has scored, obviously, against Norwich. It's just, he's not a bad... He's obviously coming because Fernandinho is getting on a bit now. Obviously, you saw last the end of the last season he got he was injured for the rest of the season, and that is another concern for Manchester City. Obviously, if Fernandinho goes off injured, what they're going to do because he someone else will have to go centre back. Will Rodri go there and someone will slip into the defence? Who knows? Um, Pep Guardiola has confirmed that they will not be signing another centre back in January. It says that he's well, he said that to Sky. As long as if that's going to be true or not, I'm not sure. But I probably believe him because I think the party is due back at that time. Stones will be well back by then anyway. So at the moment, it's not going great for Man City defensively. But going forward, you know, I thought absolutely unbelievable showed today against Everton that they can be great going forward, obviously likes of Kevin De Bruyne and Raheem Sterling, Mares, Aguero, Jesus, Sané, who is obviously injured at the moment. They've got uh, Bernardo Silva, how can I forget? He, the, the, it's an absolute unreal force going forward, but when it comes back to like, the defence, it's not good at all. When they've got like fit centre-backs like Laporte and Stones and Otamendi and all them, it's not a bad defence. It's still probably not as good as Liverpool's. And still... They're losing, City are losing players, and so it's just getting worse and weaker and weaker and weaker every time someone's getting injured. So, Man City not having the best of luck at the back at the moment, obviously. Um, there were some Pep Guardiola's relying on Fernandinho to do a good job in replace for Stones. But I don't know, I, to be fair, I feel like Man City have improved a little bit since Fernandinho's moved into that centre back role. I think John Stones, not a man, just did not work. As a partnership, if that would, that might have took time to get used. Obviously, to keep Vincent Company at the left, I think gone to uh, Belgium, his his home country, and players manager. Um, it's, it's was it well was it a good time for Company to go? I think it was, but in a way, I'm regretting letting him go now. Obviously, if they had him, he'd be playing now. Um, so you know what, I think City, Pep Guardiola does need to start sorting the defence out. Um, this is like the first season Pep Guardiola was here at Manchester City, it was awful. Going forward they were unbelievable, well not as good as they are now, but they were, weren't were bad. At the back they were awful when he first joined. At the, I remember his first time at Goodson Park, like where he was today, uh, between Man City and Everton, it was got absolutely battered 4-0. Obviously it wasn't as one they didn't concede four goals, they conceded one but last season they were able to get a clean sheet there. Last season they were second the second top defensive clean sheet with I think it was nineteen or twenty. Allison had twenty one or twenty, I can't quite remember now, at Liverpool. And I think they got an unbelievable goalkeeper and you know what? Is this going to affect City in the title race? Possibly. Because I feel like there's like teams like Norwich and Everton, they've created chances. Last season, especially Everton, they didn't create much at all. And 
if like Man, if, if Norwich met Man City last season, last two seasons, I think they would have got battered. But the weakened defence helped Norwich out big time, I think. But don't take nothing away from Norwich. Um, but I, I think I do think it's not a great time defensively for City, and I do think this possibly may cost them. Depend, depending, obviously, Crystal Palace in two weeks away. Obviously, well, Wolves at home. I feel like they're comfortable at home. They'll be absolutely fine. It's away games. I feel like anyone can give them a go. Obviously, Liverpool coming up. They've got Crystal Palace. Um, so, yeah, it's not... Crystal Palace away is going to be a hard game uh, for the defence. Going forward, you, you expect him City to score. It's, it's similar with Liverpool, you, Man City. You just... You can never like keep them out. It's they always score, and if you want to win the game, you've got to score about three goals. And basically, Man City usually score three goals, so it's not an easy position for any club, any team. Like let's say Sheffield United, they they have to score three goals to win the game. Usually, obviously Liverpool score one today, but because but you can't you can't see it happening, can you? Obviously, but uh, another thing uh, a lot of people have picked on that pundits and everything that City are very um, vulnerable at the front post from corners. Obviously, you've seen the likes of Norwich take advantage of that. Crystal Palace last season, Leicester, uh, Lords. It must have happened about eight times now in the last. Since well last season and the start of this season, it, people have noticed that they were very weak. They didn't get done by it by Everton today, but or tonight. But the Yami Mina obviously it was no more central than on the near post. But he, he could have scored about a hat trick um, with his head today. Yami Mina, Everton centre back. He just. There's basically every single one was straight at Henderson. Don't take nothing, well, take nothing away from Henderson. Some great saves in there, but I think Man City are relying on their attack right now to get in the goals because you know that Man City away, you feel like they are going to concede. They're not going to keep clean sheets away any time soon. So they are relying on their attack. When they come up against Liverpool, I feel that I cannot see City winning that game because obviously Liverpool have got the best defence in the league personally and... Going forward, they're unbelievable, and City won't be able to cope. And, uh, personally, I think at, all, at Anfield, I think City will have no chance. But anyway, thank you for watching. This was just like to see what Pep is gonna do about the defence. What what other ideas he could, what he could put in City? I'm not sure. I think it's gonna stay as Fernandinho after Mendy. But what if one of them gets injured? I'm not sure what he'll, ha he'll do. Will he have to bring in like a, a free agent or something? Um, who's not exactly great either so it's not gonna it's not a great place to see at the moment but anyway thank you for watching and um, more football videos coming up um, Matthew will probably be doing WWE videos so anyway guys thank you for watching and bye, like subscribe and bye peace <laughs>